In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the magic loop technique for working small circumference items in the round. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Magic loop is a technique for knitting small circumference items like socks or mittens or sweater sleeves or infant hats, uh, knitting them on a large circumference needle. So these small circumference items are traditionally knit on double pointed needles. So they would be items that would be smaller than what you could knit on say a 16 inch circular needle. Now these days we do have circular needles that are quite small, 12 inches or nine inches or even eight inches in circumference. Those are also a substitute for knitting with double pointed needles. But with Magic Loop, you're using a circular needle that has standard length tips of five inches. And so those needles are going to be at least 24 inches in circumference. But in most cases to work Magic Loop, you're going to want a needle 32 inches to 40 inches in circumference if you're knitting, say, one item at a time. Some people like to work things that are in pairs like mittens and socks or sleeves. They, will, they like to work them two at a time on the same needle. And in that case, you'd need a larger circumference needle. So 40 to 48 inches in circumference. Now, the other thing about the needles, aside from being at least 32 inches in circumference, is you want them to have a cable that is quite flexible. So these needles I'm using here are Chow, from Chowgu. They're the Chowgu red lace needles. And they have a really nice uh, needle that's flexible and doesn't have memory. So it's not going to constantly try to to reform into its original shape, it's, it's happy to be formed into whatever shape you want it to be formed in um, to right now. In the past, like 10, 15 years ago, there were very few brands of needles that did have flexible cables. So, so you had to be a little bit more careful when you were buying needles. But these days, in most cases, the needles that you can buy are going to have flexible cables. So I'm going to show you how Magic Loop works conceptually so that you can understand what's going on. And then I'll show you how to actually work the technique starting from the cast on. So the idea is that half of the item that you're working in the round, half of it is sitting on the cable, just resting on the cable. And the other half of the round is sitting on the needle tip. Now for small circumference items, often you'll be able to get the entire half of the circumference on the actual needle tip because it's this five inches wide. And, and a lot of times you're working things that are four inches wide or, or even smaller. Sometimes you will be knitting something that's a little bit bigger and part of it will be sitting on the cable. But for most of the time, you will just be able to knit right off of this needle tip. You won't be having to push stitches up onto the needle while you're working the half of the round. So again, I'm just going to show you conceptually how this works and then I'll show you how to start from the beginning. So you work from the left needle onto the right needle just as you would in any other knitting situation. And again, the other half of the round is sitting on that cable, just waiting. So at this point, I'm knitting the last stitch of this half of the round. So now my left needle tip is free and all of the stitches that I've just worked are on the right hand tip. So now I want to knit the other half of the round. So I turn the work like this and I pull on the cable that is a t that these stitches are sitting on, bringing those stitches up to this needle tip. And now I can put the stitches I just worked, I can let them rest on the cable. So I pull out enough cable to allow them to sit on here and leave a loop over here while I also have a loop on the right. So that's the magic loop bit. You have to have enough cable to sit, stick out each side of the work. And then I can knit this half and that will just be what gets repeated. They work a half of the round, turn it, 
and then reposition these stitches onto a needle tip, work those, and it repeats on and on. So let's see how we do this from the beginning. So here I cast on 24 stitches that I can work in the round. And so after I cast them all on, I'm going to slide them all onto the cable. And then I'm going to divide it roughly in half. It doesn't have to be perfect and exact at the beginning. I'm just dividing roughly in half till I find about where the center is. And then I just push that loop out in between them. So I roughly divided these in half. Sometimes I get lucky and that's exactly a half and sometimes I'm off by a stitch or two. So at this point when I'm first starting I'm going to put everything on the needle tips and then I'm going to just look to make sure nothing's twisted. It's fairly easy with magic loop when you don't have tons and tons of stitches that things aren't going to be rotated around the needle like this but you do want to make sure everything that the cast on edge is, is facing the center like this. Then we're going to line up the two needles parallel and they're pointing to the right and we want the needle that has the working yarn, so the last stitch that was cast on, we want that one hanging from the back and we're going, that's the needle tip that we're going to pull out. So now the, these stitches are resting on the cable and I'm going to start by knitting these stitches here. So what I like to do is I like to take the working yarn and just lay it over the top of this needle so that I don't start knitting and get the yarn caught in the middle of the loop here. So I bring it over the top just to get it out of the way so that I can get in position to knit. So I'm going to knit in knit two, purl two ribbing all the way across. So I have 24 stitches. That means I can work the first 12 in knit two, purl two, and I'll be ending with a purl two. So I'm ready to start. And what I'm going to do is I'm holding the stitches, the, the cable, the one that's holding the stitches, I'm holding that against this first needle so that I can keep this cable close to the needle tip. If I let this just hang out here while I'm trying to knit. I can get quite a large gap between that last cast on stitch and the first stitch that's knit. So I'm going to keep those pinched together as I get started. And I only need to do this for the first couple of stitches and then I can let it uh, go. And I tend to just keep uh, that needle pressed up against there at least for a while. Um, there's you know, I, I can let it go, but I'm going to want to pinch it again later as I get near the end of the half round. So I am going to have exactly the number of stitches. I did end up dividing it exactly. I'm ending here with a purl two. I'll show you in a second how you can adjust the number of stitches that you have on a given needle. I'll show you that in just a bit. So we finished this and we're going to rotate so that the stitches that we just worked are in the back. We're going to pull on this cable in the, for the front to get those stitches that were resting on the cable onto the needle. So now they're both on the needles. We've got the working yarn is attached to the needle that's in the back. Bring the yarn to hang over the front. Pull this out so that those stitches that we just worked are now resting on the cable. And now we can knit this half of the round. And again, we're going to hold that cable next to the needle that we're working from um, as we first start. And then we can um, relax our hold on it. So we're approaching the end of the round here. I'm just going to tighten up this a little bit. So we know where the beginning of the round is because we have divided the, the stitches at that point and because the yarn tail is hanging there. So this is a way that we can always keep track of where we are at the beginning of the round. So in this round, I want to show you how you can adjust the number of stitches that are, that are on any given needle. If you need to move stitches from one needle to the other, you can do that at the beginning of a needle or at the end of a needle. So let's say these two stitches at the beginning of the needle, I really want to be at the end of the round. 
or on the other needle. So I can work, it, maybe it's one stitch, maybe it's two, however many stitches I want to actually move. I just work those stitches and then I just pull on the needle and let them slide onto the cable. So now they've been moved to the other half of the needle and they've been worked so it's just fine. So let's see what happens if we get to the end of a needle and we don't want the stitches at the end of the needle to be on this half of the round but we want them to be on the next half of the round. So let's say I want these stitches to be on this half of the round but these I want to actually move. So I can stop working at this point and I can just pull on this needle tip and now they're on this cable. And so now when I turn the work to begin the next half of the round, they'll be at the beginning of this needle ready to be worked. Now another a problem that you can have when you're first uh, joining in the round, working the first few rounds, this is a problem regardless of what technique you're using to work in the round where you just don't have enough length yet and the work wants to turn inside out and right side out again. So sometimes things, especially when you're working in ribbing, it can be hard to tell what is the, the right side of the work and what is the wrong side of the work. And you may put your work down um, or you may have both of them on the needles and then you lose track of what was the next needle that you were supposed to work on. So the way you can tell whether you are working correctly is by where the working yarn is attached. The working yarn is always attached to the last stitch that was knit so that when you're be you're ready to work a new needle, the working yarn should be attached to the back needle. If this work was turned inside out like this, uh, and we saw that the working yarn was attached to the front needle, we would know that we should not be uh, working this needle right now. We need to turn it back inside out and make sure that the working yarn is attached to the back needle and then we can move, pull out the back needle. Once you have a significant amount of work on the needles, it's not going to be turning inside out. There's no way that this is just going to uh, flip inside out and have the whole sock be inside it. That's not going to happen. But when you are working the first few rounds, that can happen. There just isn't enough stability in what you've worked to maintain um, that position. So this isn't just a problem that happens to people new to Magic Loop. This happens every time I cast on a sock. At some point, I'm getting ready to work the next half of the round, and I'll, and I'll realize that the yarn is not in the right place because it's just so easy for it to turn inside out. I first began using Magic Loop when my kids were in sports and I was spending a lot of time knitting socks while at the ice rink and swimming pool. While I quite liked knitting socks on double pointed needles, retrieving a dropped DPN in the bleachers was not always easy and when on an airplane it could be nearly impossible. I later discovered Traveling Loop and it was at that point that I realized I could use a single 32 inch circular needle to work almost any project, whether it was knit flat or in the round. It didn't matter what the circumference of the item was or if the circumference changed. I could use the same needles and I just changed the technique I use as the circumference of my project changed. Of course, the great thing about knitting is that there are always multiple ways to get to the same end point. The advantage of only having to use a single 32 inch needle for any project is something that I love. Other knitters prefer other technique tool combinations and would rather use specific types of tools in specific knitting situations. Whether or not you find Magic Loop appealing for knitting small circumference items, it's a technique worth knowing and understanding when you find yourself in a situation where your preferred tools are not available. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.